Artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and the metaverse are among the biggest buzzwords in marketing today, particularly since the formidable success story of ChatGPT. But beyond the hype aspect only, many brands are wondering how to make the most of these technologies. Today, we have a very special guest, Diego Di Tommaso, the co-founder of Over, a company at the forefront of augmented reality, artificial intelligence, and the metaverse. Together, we'll be discussing how these technologies are transforming the fashion industry and enhancing the customer experience. You're watching What the Lux, the show that analyzes the latest trends in digital luxury and highlights the campaigns and strategy that will make you think What the Lux. I'm David Klingbell, and thanks for watching. Hi, Diego, and welcome to What the Lux. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure. Great. Well, it's good to have you here. Um, I know that your company, Over, is at the intersection of many trends. AI, virtual reality, metaverse, you know, all the good buzzwords that marketing, marketing professionals yeah. and marketers are following. So can you tell us a bit more about Over? What are you guys doing? And, uh, you, know, what's, uh, you know, what's the specialty of your, of your company? Yeah, so uh, what we are building in over, what is our vision is, is basically editing the physical world. So augmented it with augmented reality. And so we, we see a future where uh, we will all wear smart glasses and we will have a, an augmented visual field. Uh, field. So uh, what we're building now is the foundation of the data layer that basically connects this 3D information with space. And right now uh, our app, uh, everything works on mobile phones because mobile phones, I mean, is the uh, is the best way right now to experience AR. And also, everybody has one in his pocket, so it's uh, it's low friction path to get into this medium. Uh, but of course, the, the the big the big change will be will be with the smart glasses. Um, Over is a platform that was launched in 2020, and our main focus, I, I would say, the core of our technology is precise localization. So as I, as I mentioned before, our goal is to edit the physical world. And if you want to do that, uh, the technology that is available on the market now, that is GPS uh, for localizing space, is, is not enough. It's good for some use cases like games, like Pokemon Go, for example. Uh, but if you want, like, for example, to showcase uh, some art that need to be exactly in a specific location, you want to augment a shop window, uh, you want to showcase uh, some wearables and so on. You need to be able to really uh, augment the world in a precise way. And so the core technology that we built uh, is a system to locate in space through computer vision instead of GPS. And yes, I hope that was not too touchy. Uh... That, that was actually perfect. And I think that a lot of people who are following this uh, video, you know, they are convinced of the potential of technologies such as uh, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and so on and so forth. You started to mention some notions such as shop windows. And I guess, you know, we're getting closer and closer to the topic of fashion. Why do you think these technologies have such a big potential for fashion and luxury in particular? And basically, why should fashion people care about uh, those technologies and about over according to you? Basically, I would say that in general, uh, fashion uh, will be more and more important in the metaverse because fashion is a way to express ourselves. And we really do care about what is our image uh, in the metaverse, let's say. Also in the metaverse that is that we live in right now. So let's say the social media metaverse, because we have a digital presence over there. Uh, but as we spend more and more time in these uh, 3D worlds, these interactive worlds where we have a physicity over there, it will be more and more important to actually wear things that represent uh, who we are, and so just just like in, in in the real world. So, in general, I think that for both meta, I mean the the virtual reality metaverses and the augmented reality metaverses, uh, fashion will be a big trend. Uh, but specifically, uh, going the, going down to AR, uh, I think that there's a great potential. Uh, first of all, to sh showcase products. If we think about what uh, big brands are doing with AR, for example, uh, Apple. If you think about Apple, they have been kind of pioneers in showcasing uh, the representation, the AR representation of their products. And then that's the reason why they do that. Uh, because if you think about this, I mean, our brains are wired to process data in the physical world. So if you present an object 
uh, 3D object mixed with it, uh, the experience is much more compelling. It's like a low friction path to, to, your, to your experience. So you get a better experience of that same product if compared to seeing this product, maybe also in 3D, but on a screen, uh, just uh, take out from the physical world. So uh, really the potential to actually showcase uh, the product in AI is very powerful, just because, I mean, this is the way we process information. So that, that, that's the first thing that uh, I think would go in that direction. And another thing that is very powerful with AR is the combination with AI. You was mentioning at the beginning uh, about ChatGPT, and uh, I mean, that is like a kind of epiphany that everybody understood what how how, how, how powerful these lar large language models are. So we've been dreaming about this for uh, for a really long time, actually since the writing of the white paper in 2018. And now the technology is there to do that. And so just imagine uh, to have shop assistants uh, inside malls or inside shops that basically should be animated by a human, but also could be animated by one of these large language models. And I mean, we are reaching a point in the development of this technology uh, that the interaction is very, uh, I mean, it's kind of indistinguishable from, from a real human. I, I don't want to say that those pass the Turing test, but if you uh, actually ask to tell about a specific uh, subject and so on, you can really train these models uh, to interact with, uh, with other humans. And what is best uh, that speaking when with an AR avatar that you see in space. So this is another uh, big potential that we see. And, and finally, uh, coming back to what we are building also for the Metaverse Fashion Week, uh, the, an, another, another uh, potential use case of AR is like creating spectacular um, sh um, visualization of things like, like for example, what we thought, uh, and for this we was inspired actually by a video, a viral video that came out from from Snapchat. I don't know, like two months ago, there was a huge model working on a street in Los Angeles, and so we say, why don't we do the same? We do a huge catwalk, uh, and the stage of the catwalk will be the Piazza Duomo of Milan. Uh, that is, I mean, a very iconic place for for fashion, and so that's exactly what we're building. So. Uh, we are bringing out uh, from screens uh, these experiences. So now you don't only be, uh, you are not only in the metaverse uh, watching at the screen, but you are in the metaverse watching at reality, an augmented version of this reality. And, and, and what also I'm, I think is very exciting about this is that if you think about that, I mean, the metaverse in some way democratizes the access to uh, I mean, information and, and experiences in general, because you can access uh, VR content from everywhere in the world. Uh, AR, uh, in some way, takes also a little part of the exclusivity, uh, exclusivity that also, uh, in some cases, is an important part of the identity of uh, hard luxury brands. And like, for example, for the event that they were building, everybody that is in the Duomo will be able to see it because uh, the experience is connected to that location. But we also built an exclusive uh, observation point. Uh, basically, we rented the Terrazza Duomo Ventuno, that is a very nice terrace looking at the Duomo. And so in this way, you have the two experiences together, the democratization of that, but also an event uh, like a, a very special location where you can network with people and uh, having something that is more familiar uh, to, I mean, these big fashion shows where, I mean, people meet in, with, with influential people in the space uh, in an exclusive location. I think what's very interesting in your vision is that the experiences that you create with Over and the way you uh, look at the industry is creating experiences that are not virtual only, but that mix a part of reality with a part of virtual. So you add a layer on top of reality uh, on top of the real world uh, in order to create very exclusive and very immersive uh, experiences. When you think about how luxury brands and fashion brands can you know, adopt those technologies, do you see any specific challenges or any roadblocks uh, that fashion, are, fashion brands are going to face when working with these technologies? I, I think that the, the first block, it, it depends. I mean, if we talk about the metaverse in general or about Web3 metaverse, I think that the, what is interesting and I see what the, these brands are mostly looking at is Web3. And Web3 itself uh, has some complexities, of course, of interactions. And uh, if you want like to sell NFTs, you need to know about MetaMask and stuff like that. So this is one, one of the problems. And, and the other issue, uh, I guess that, you know, uh, 
those brands have an incredible heritage. I mean, they were able to build uh, an incredible storytelling uh, around their brand. And so I think that uh, they are very cautious uh, on the way they move inside this new medium of communication. They don't want to dilute their brand. And I think it's, it's a very uh, important thing. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's an opportunity because, uh, I mean, like I have, a, I have a child that is seven year old and he spends so much time in the metaverse, in this case, on Web2 metaverse playing and so on. But for example, it's a way he socializes with some of his friends. Uh, like he have a cousin that is like three hours driving away and the way he meets them is inside games. So the new generations uh, are really native uh, to the metaverse. And so again, coming to the opportunity, uh, I mean, uh, I think that these brands also need to think about what are uh, the next uh, the next consumers, or maybe uh, also if they are more uh, uh, sorry, if they are more also into Web three, they don't think any way uh, anymore about consumers. They think about community. So how we build these new communities? How we communicate in the right way? So uh, they need to take some risk. Uh, to basically come out of their comfort zone and try in this new media, and this is the barrier. But on the other side, I mean, there is the opportunity to start speaking with uh, the community of the future of their brand. And I think this is something that uh, no brand uh, should underestimate. I'm sure that fashion brands in general, luxury brand, are going to have to master those new skills in order to connect with those community and to take part in this big opportunity that is AR, the metaverse, AI. Uh, I know that you're organizing an event, a festival about the future of digital fashion uh, in just a few days. Can you tell us a bit more about this event and what could fashion brand learn from attending your, your event? Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, everybody says that, but I guess that really this time is the first of a kind of, uh, of this event. I think the interesting thing of uh, this event is that it's part of um, the Metaverse Fashion Week. And... You know, Metaverse Fashion Week this year is all about interoperability. That is one of uh, the core value propositions of Web3. Uh, so uh, just to the ones that's not uh, very familiar with this, I mean, in Web3, I mean, the, the, the very apparent thing is the ownership style, uh, thing. So the fact that you own NFTs. But owning something that is confined to a single platform uh, it's not really owning it because basically you are in a kind of wallet garden. So the vision that is really we are really pushing in the Web3 metaverse is having these assets that are cross metaverse. So you can bring them around and, and flex them, let's say, in different metaverses. And really, uh, the vision about so this metaverse fashion week is about collaborating between different metaverses. If you think about that, this is something that we don't see in Web2 uh, because usually, you know, platforms are competitors. Here we are not competitors, we, here we are collaborators. So the content that is built in one platform, uh, it's something very important also for other platforms and can be consumed in, this, in different platforms. So I think this is a, a very powerful message uh, that, uh, I mean, uh, we, 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 can, we can keep pushing and bringing uh, inside this event. And the other thing, as I was mentioning, is this, is this idea of uh, having this uh, uh, city scale and mental reality experiences. Uh, where really uh, we can mix uh, what is, I mean, the, the heritage of, of fashion uh, with these new mediums in a spectacular way with, uh, with this catwalk uh, in real life. And, and, and you know, we, we was able in a very short time actually to onboard uh, some very important brands uh, inside this, uh, I mean, uh, event. So uh, the first one uh, we, uh, we onboarded was Pinko, uh, but then we was able also to, thanks to those Space Runners, that is another NFT project to bring Balmain. Uh, then Pet Trigger and artists uh, bring us Gucci Vault. And so, I mean, I think that, uh, I mean, it's, it would be very, very, very interesting event. And, and, and I think that also brands that maybe are not participating directly, maybe uh, they will be interested in being part of this event and see how it works and maybe getting inspired uh, to do something uh, similar uh, in the next months. Well, Balma, Gucci, Pinko, I mean, a lot of interesting uh, brands will be there. Uh, I know you, you plan also to have a, a great agenda, so I, I encourage everybody in the audience to attend this event. I'll be following it very closely uh, myself as well. Thanks everybody for watching this video and thank you so much for your time, Diego. Thank you. It was a pleasure.